Joining me on the line, uh, listen, I'm going to take a run at your last name, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to jump this hurdle. Joe Dombrowski? Eh? On the first try, my yes! man, on the first try. <laughs> that just made my whole day, and you know what? I'll never be able to say it right again. Joe, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me. So uh, you're, you're a funny person, a comedian. <laughs> That sounded really degrading. Uh, All good. <laughs> uh, you're coming to the Funny Bone here in August. You got the uh, schools out for summer tour. Now, let me get this right. You started out as a kindergarten teacher, right? You know what? Common misconception. I actually started comedy before. I really? Teaching, which a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Okay, so how does the whole kindergarten thing work into this? Because I, I have a, well, he just finished kindergarten. He'll be in first grade this coming fall. So Great. that's just a wild world, right? That's an understatement it's insane psychotic (laughs) completely completely bat crazy it's just it's it's nuts but it's it's, okay i'll I'll describe it like this kindergarten is a beautiful chaotic mess yeah i i could see that did you talk let me ask you this did you talk to the parents like you talked to uh their five-year-old no that's and you know here's the thing i talk to the five-year-olds like i talk to the parents i I just like people i'm not one of those mary poppins teachers who runs around like Boys and girls, come to the carpet. No, it's not me. I just talked to them like it is. You know what? You brought up the carpet and I had to do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, Joe uh, Dombrowski is coming to the funny boat here. Uh, Tell me about the Schools Out for Summer Tour. What's uh, this all about, Mr. D? Yeah, so, you know, stand up all over the country. And basically, the theme of this show is the chaos that is kindergarten. So I got tons of stories to tell about just the wild things that happen in teaching that people (laughs) probably don't know about. Because I'm one of the first who's actually going to be brave enough to say this stuff. But i uh, just bringing it to you live on stage, talking about the trials and tribulations of being a kindergarten teacher. And uh, hilarity ensues. What was your comedy like before teaching? So I got into comedy right before I started teaching. Okay. Uh, so I was, kind of, I was still studying to become a teacher, and I was talking a lot about like how hard that was and you know how you're, you're a full-time intern working completely for free. So I was talking about all that. And then once I started teaching, what I did is I was taking what was happening during the day and putting it out on stage until a group of parents from my class were at the show one night, oh, God. which was which is wild. I was so freaked out, but they actually loved it. They loved it so much that word spread like wildfire. And I had more and more people from school coming, and thank <laughs> God it just worked out well. So I'm still going with it. At, at what point did you go, this is gold? I mean, this is just absolute gold. You know, it was working for a while, and I knew it would be a long road. But when my first... I was kind of like putting videos out there at the same time, too. And I had one that went just like massively viral spelling test video, which you might have saw where I, yeah. I pranked my kids and did a prank spelling, spelling test. And I woke up and that one had 20 million views overnight. And that one was when I was like, OK, I got something here. <laughs> what was it like to wake up with 20 million views? I, I mean, I on the side, I'll do podcasting and all this other stuff. Not one damn thing I've ever done is blown up. What was it like to wake up and like tw- 20 million you know, it wasn't. I didn't even have to wait till I wake up to woke up to know that it was crazy. I was I was eating dinner with a friend that night after work, and I had no. I, I knew the video was like performing well, but yeah. I wasn't really thinking about it. And a friend called me at the dinner table from Tennessee, and she was like, "You're on my TV down <laughs> here right now on the TV." And I was like, "What?" And then I like looked at my phone, and my phone was exploding. My phone actually died because it was just rolling wow. with notifications so hard yeah and that, that's what it's just like surreal it's kind of like your whole everything flashes before you it's like a little scary i can imagine because everybody wants a piece of you then right well yeah too and then you know i i was actually doing comedy was not my full full-time job i was really teachers are uh i don't know if you know this very poor so comedy, no. was, com- comedy was putting gas in my tank to get to work. Honest to God. Oh wow! Or, you know, buying a lunch here or there. So, so I still needed you know teaching to really be my full time money maker. So I was worried. I'm like, am I going to lose the job? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> and then now I'm just able to do both things that I love. So it's pretty pretty great. So are you still teaching? Yes, believe it or not, I am. That's it's awesome. Twice the school's out for summers tour because it's oh, out for me too. It- it all comes together and makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So uh, is it uh, Michigan where you teach? No, I teach in uh, Seattle. Now, okay. But I'm okay. a Detroit native, so I'm from Michigan. 
So when you had the conversation with the principal, and uh, because I'm, I'm guessing this came up during the interview, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Con- yeah. I'm, I'm curious what that conversation is like because I can think of you know trying to go sell my boss on something, and be like, hey, you know. What what was that like? So when I moved to Seattle, I had definitely kind of racked up a little bit of a following and fans, you know, so it wasn't a surprise. But I really like to, I love I love teaching just as much as I love doing comedy. These are really two of my big passions. But when I'm teaching, I don't bring that life into the classroom as much as I do the other way around. So I don't really bring it up until they do. And then I tell them, yeah, you know, I actually just want to focus on my merits here. Yeah. And it kind of shuts kind of shuts it down and and people know where I stand on that. I don't really, when I'm at work, if like a parent or someone sort of fangirls or whatever, I very quickly tell them, oh, okay, I'm working here. Yeah. But uh, but when I'm on stage, hey, buy, you know, you should buy a ticket to come see my show. How about that? I'll give you all the time of day then. <laughs> here, kids, give these flyers I'm, to your parents tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, hey, teaching, it's the art of being able to beg, borrow, and steal. Get what you need to survive. That's so No stranger cool. to that. Uh, Joe Dombrowski coming to town uh, August 4th. Now, do you still k- teach kindergarten or are you looking at other play- uh, the, yes, the teaching part of the, Kinder- the the teaching part is fascinating to me. Yeah, it is. Yep, I'm still teaching kindergarten. I I'm a real life PBS show. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but yes, kindergarten's my thing. Have you ever slipped in front of the kids? Like said something because I've I've done that to my kid all growing up in my family had to have a sharp tongue. And of course, you know, <laughs> yeah. being in radio like you, you kind of slip and you say something like, "Oh, I mean, probably shouldn't have said that to him." You know this, I'm, and I'm not. This might sound like a lie. I have not slipped in front of the kindergartners, but I've came very, very close. They say things. They, like kindergartners don't have a filter. I think their brains are just in their throat. They think yeah. things and they just say it out loud. I dyed my hair uh, before I left to go on tour, and they're like, "Why'd you do that?" And I told them, "Well, you know, just look a little younger." And then one kid just looked at me. He goes, "But what are you going to do about your face?" <laughs> that might have been the first time I sl- might I may have almost slipped. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. See, like with my and kid, that's every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His big thing was when I turned forty. He kept he kept just hitting that nail home every time he could. Well, Dad, you know you are forty now. Dad, you're forty. Oh God. So. <laughs> Yeah, they don't let you forget. No, they don't. They really, really don't. And they remember the weirdest things, right? The weirdest things. Oh, God. I can't, the, the, all the times that the kid has remembered something, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. I, I'm actually colorblind, which is really funny. And I just kind of said one time, like, not even really thinking about it. <laughs> and then the kids made me um, birthday cards, and all the cards were black and yellow. And they were like, because you're colorblind. You said those are the ones you can see good. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, I should say that. Wow, just, you know, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, that's so Exactly. Cool. So it, let me ask you this about your show. Is it more of the funny stories or the gross stories? Because kids are also gross. Oh, kids are disgusting. Absolutely. There's no, there's no <laughs> denying that. Uh, they're just tiny vials of germs that walk around and try to hug you every day. Uh, but it, it's, focused on the fun, it's focused on the funny some of them are disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. So have you ever had any parents that have been kind of opposed to this whole thing? Yeah, you know, it's really weird. I actually, I get that question a lot. And no, I have not. Really? And, um, I, I, think, I think why is because, you know, every day in the classroom, I'm telling the kids, like, you can accomplish your dreams. Like, we're, like there's, no, there's no wrong way to achieve your yeah. goals. Like, just tackle them and do them. And there I am, their teacher, the living example of that, right? front of them and that's I talk great. to them about it and talk to them about prepping for tour and how I worked my way from the ground up. Um, and it's kind of a real, it's like a surreal situation. Kids don't often have that sort of uh, teacher who is, is living that life. And uh, it's cool when I can share that with them. So I think the p- parents actually really appreciate sort of having that like world to classroom connection, you know? Yeah. I, the only reason I brought it up is because uh, you see uh, every once in a while stories about teachers and, and it's a, kind of a different ball game. Uh, but they'll have like the only fans or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, is your stuff uh, a little uh, probably on the cleaner side and not as blue? Yeah. You know, it's, it's I wouldn't say blue. Definitely not blue. But yeah. I ride the line for sure. And the fact of it is, is teaching is not sunshine and rainbows. Like no. there is some garbage that goes on in this profession, and I'm I'm spilling it out there. I'm going to throw it out there and tell everyone exactly like it is. 
And it's because that is how teaching is. And my goal with that is that I want non-teachers to see the show and I want them to leave laughing. And then I want them to sit in their car and think, wow, that's really messed up. That's really how education is. We should change that and start to have a better mindset, you know? Oh. Your tr- treat your teachers well. Tip them like you would your bartender. Oh, can you imagine if teachers had a tip jar? Oh, my God. I, I would never let anyone forget that I had a tip jar. Let me tell you. <laughs> it would be during conferences, the slow push across the desk yeah, of the mason yeah. jar or something. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, 20 minimum. Yes, exactly. Well, Joe, I know you've been doing this for a while today. Uh <laughs> This is great. Uh, do you have real quick? Do you have kids? I don't. It's it's on the bucket list. We're looking at the next five years, but right now I'm just living my life. I'm glad the kid is on the bucket list. It's on the bucket list. Is yeah, it? We don't know when, but it's inevitable. Is it above or below, like seeing the Grand Canyon? <laughs> it's definitely above. It could happen in the Grand Canyon. You never know. There you go. Awesome. Well, Joe, we'll let you get back to your day. We'll get all the information about the show up. And uh, best of luck to you, man. This was fun. Awesome. Thanks for having me. See you soon. All right. We'll see you, dude. Bye.